Every Minecraft player has wanted their own server at some point, a place where you and your friends can build whatever you want, set your own rules, and actually play together without dealing with random lag or server restrictions. And honestly, it's never been easier to set one up than it is right now. So if you've been wanting to create your own private world where you and your friends can actually play together smoothly, this video is going to show you exactly how to do it. And the best part is that no complicated coding is required. We'll be doing this entire process through Hostinger. So if you want to follow along, I'll leave a link for Hostinger in the description below. And make sure to use code Thomas 10 for 10% off your purchase. Now we're specifically focusing on Minecraft Java Edition here, which is the version that gives you the most flexibility when it comes to customization and multiplayer options. So let's get right into it. First things first, you need to pick a hosting plan that actually fits what you're trying to do. Head over to the Hostinger Minecraft server hosting page using the link in the description. You'll see a few different plans laid out in front of you. The most affordable option starts at $5.49 per month, and that comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is honestly enough for a small group of friends playing together. You also get built-in DDoS protection, which keeps your server safe from anything that could knock it offline. Plus, there are free weekly backups, so if something goes wrong, you're not losing all your progress. If you're planning to keep things simple, just a few friends, and maybe a couple of plugins, then Game Panel 1 or 2 will work perfectly fine. But if you're thinking bigger, like running a server with tons of mods, custom worlds, or a larger player base, then you'll want to look at the higher tier plans, because they give you more resources to work with. There's no player limit on any of these plans, so whether you've got 5 friends or 50, the server can handle it. The difference difference between plans is really about performance and how many plugins or mods you want running at the same time. And if you're not totally sure which one to pick, you can always click on the AI assistant called Cody in the bottom right corner of the page. You can ask it a few quick questions about what you need the server for, and it'll recommend the best option for you. Once you've picked your plan, don't forget to use code THOMAS10 at checkout for that extra 10% off. Every bit helps, especially if you're planning to run the server long term. Now one of the biggest advantages of using Hostinger's VPS hosting is how easy the setup process actually is. A lot of people think setting up a server means typing in a bunch of commands and hoping you don't break something, but that's not the case. After you've completed your purchase, just log into your Hostinger account and navigate to the VPS section. You'll see your newly purchased Minecraft server hosting plan listed there. Go ahead and click on it to open it up. The first thing you'll need to do is fill in a few quick details. Start by picking your server location. This is actually more important than it sounds, because the closer the server is to you and your players, the better your connection will be. Less distance means lower ping, which means better gameplay and way less lag. So if you're in North America, pick a North American server. If you're in Europe, go with a European one. You get the idea. Next, you'll need to create a password for your game panel. This is what you'll use to log in and manage everything, so make it something secure, but also something you'll remember. Once that's done, you're basically set to move forward. The system will start setting up your server automatically in the background. To actually access your server and start managing it, go to the VPS overview page. This is your main dashboard, and it's where you'll find all the important information about your server. You'll see things like your resource usage, which shows you how much CPU and memory you're using at any given time. You'll also see your operating system, your panel access button, your IP address, and your SSH login details if you ever need them for more advanced stuff. There are also some really helpful tutorials and tips right there on the page. Hostinger does a good job of guiding you through the process, so if you ever feel lost, just check those out. Now we're getting to the fun part, configuring your actual Minecraft game panel. To do this, click the Manage Panel button on that same overview page. It'll take you to a login screen. Use the password you created earlier to log in. Once you're in, you'll land on the main menu. The first thing you want to do is click Create Instance for the application. This is basically telling the system that you want to set up a Minecraft server. You'll see a list of different game options. Click on Minecraft Java Edition. The panel will automatically set it up with the latest available version of the game. You can give your instance a custom name if you want. It's not required, but it helps if you're planning to run multiple servers or just want to keep things organized. Under the After Creation section, I highly recommend leaving it on Update and Start Always. This just makes sure your server stays up to date and restarts automatically automatically if something goes wrong. Trust me, this feature can save you a lot of time down the line. Once that's set, click Create Instance and wait for it to load. It usually only takes a few seconds, maybe a minute at most. When your instance finishes loading, you'll see a message that says, Waiting for user input. Don't worry, that's completely normal. It's not an error, and nothing's broken. It just means you still need to accept the Minecraft End User License Agreement. Click Manage on your instance, check the box to accept the Minecraft EULA, and confirm. Once you do that, the server will continue starting up, and your Minecraft server will be fully online and ready to use. To actually connect to it, go to the connection info section. You'll see something called an endpoint, which is basically just your server's IP address and port number. Go ahead and copy that endpoint. Now you can share that with your friends, and they'll be able to join your server directly from their Minecraft client. Just paste it into the multiplayer server address field, and you're good to go. Monitoring your server is also really straightforward. Right on the main dashboard, you can check your server status at any time. You'll see metrics like CPU usage and memory usage, which help you understand how your server is performing. If things are running slow, you can check those numbers 
numbers and see if you're maxing out your resources. If you are, that's a sign you might need to upgrade your plan or reduce the number of plugins or mods you're running. You can also stop or restart your server whenever you need to. There's a button right there on the dashboard, or if you want the AI assistant to handle it for you instead. It's built right into the panel, so you can literally type something like restart my server and it'll handle it. Now let me show you how to add plugins to your server, because this is what takes your server from basic to actually fun and unique. First, make sure you're on your server's main page. Click on configuration in the left menu. Now under server type, you want to switch it to Spigot. Spigot is a modified version of the Minecraft server software that allows you to run plugins, which are basically add-ons that change or enhance gameplay. Once you've selected Spigot, you'll see a new option appear called plugins. Click on that. This opens up a huge library of plugins you can install with just one click. There are thousands of options, so you can really customize your server however you want. Let me show you a popular one as an example. In the search bar, type mob heads. This plugin makes it so that when you kill a mob in the game, there's a chance it drops its head as an item. It's a small thing, but it adds a cool collectible element to the game that players really enjoy. Once you find the mob heads plugin, you'll see a description plus the install button. Click that. The plugin will install automatically, and within a few seconds, it's live on your server. You don't need to restart anything manually. It just works. And you can repeat this process for any plugin you want. The plugin library makes it incredibly easy to build the exact experience you're looking for. Just keep in mind that every plugin uses resources. So if you start noticing lag or performance issues, you might need to cut back a little or upgrade your plan. Now that you have your server up and running and have customized it with the plugins you want, let's talk about some common errors you might run into and how to fix them. One error you might see is server responded with an invalid server key. This usually happens when either your Minecraft server or your launcher is outdated. If it's your server, try accessing it through the local host address and restarting the client. Also, this error tends to show up more when you're launching the server using an exe file, so try using the jar file instead and see if that clears it up. Another common one is you are not whitelisted on the server. This just means your username hasn't been added to the list of players allowed to join. To fix it, turn on the whitelist feature by typing whitelist on in the console. Then add the player's username with the command whitelist add player name. If you want to double check who's on the list, just type whitelist list. And by the way, if you're entering these commands in game, instead of the console, just add a slash before them, like slash whitelist add player name. Then there's the connection refused connect error. This usually means your connection request is being blocked or dropped by the server. First, try joining using a different internet connection to see if it's a network issue on your end. If that doesn't work, check your firewall settings and make sure Minecraft is added to the exception list. And if none of that helps, try reinstalling your client and restarting the server. That often clears up any misconfigurations. These are just a few of the typical issues you might run into, but most of them have pretty straightforward fixes. And if you ever get stuck, don't hesitate to ask Cody for help. It's there to help, and it won't judge you for asking the same question twice. So now you know exactly how to set up your own Minecraft server using Hostinger's VPS. You can play with as many friends as you want, customize it with whatever plugins you like, and you're in full control of everything. And with Hostinger, you can get your server running in just a few minutes without any complicated setup. If you want to start your own server, click the link in the description and use code THOMAS10 for 10% off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.